Hi, welcome to the COVID-19 Lake Norman and North Mecklenburg briefing call. Today is Monday, May the 4th, and I cannot resist that Star Wars May the 4th be with you. You can see this graphic is from MGN Online Graphics, so too good to resist. And uh, for all you Star Wars fans out there, just couldn't pass up the opportunity. Uh, my name is John Bradford. I am your uh, COVID briefing call moderator. I'm a small business owner. I have two businesses in the North Mecklenburg area. Uh, about 40 employees between the two companies. I'm also a former member of the North Carolina House of Representatives, and I am honored to bring you this uh, series of calls. We've been doing these now for a little over six weeks, three days a week. Uh, the purpose of these calls is to bring together, together healthcare experts, government officials, and business leaders to provide regular COVID-19 briefings to update, educate, and support the North Mech region during the outbreak. Uh, we are working towards opening up America. Again, the White House and CDC has put out some guidelines to help local officials and state officials move towards reopening their economies, getting people back to work and continuing to protect American lives. Uh, for those of you that are uh, in public spaces and have workplaces, businesses, schools, and homes, there is some guidance out there for cleaning and disinfecting uh, from the CDC. Uh, you're gonna develop your plan, you'll implement your plan, and then you'll work your plan, maintain it, and revise it. So I really encourage you to print this out, use this as a guide, and uh, this will be great for all of you that are trying to start in, uh, reintroducing employees uh, back into your public spaces, workplaces, businesses, schools, and homes. Uh, let's see, face covering protocol, the, uh, the CDC is still recommending cloth face coverings. Uh, we talked about this on Friday, but it's worth mentioning again. The, the real purpose of these face coverings is not so that you won't catch it, but so that you won't transmit it. So if, if not everyone's wearing a face mask, then those of you that are wearing face masks, you're doing a lot of good for the other folks, but the other folks who are not wearing face masks really aren't reciprocating. So hopefully people will wear the, the face coverings. Uh, and if not, just you know, try to stay uh, you know, six feet or more away from each other. Uh, there are some youth face coverings now available by Indira Mill. Uh, so uh, I have several of these, but if you're, uh, you have someone who's a small child, they may be a little large. So they started making some youth face coverings uh, and you can go to shop.indira mills. And one thing I'm noticing is some retailers are starting to require face coverings. I, uh, I have not confirmed it, but I heard Costco, for example, is requiring anyone to walk in to have a face cover or not. So while I have not confirmed that, I have heard of other businesses as well. So having these face coverings, uh, I think, is continue to be wise as we start to get out and about. Uh, in the uh, United States, we're at 1,122,000 cases, 65,000 deaths. And as you can see from the heat map, North Carolina has moved to a little darker shade orange even more so than South Carolina. We're not nearly uh, as dark in color here as Georgia or Florida, uh, but we're about middle of the pack now and just compared to all of uh, the other states here in the U.S. Uh, FEMA Rumor Control, great website. Uh, there's no new rumors to share with you today, but just as a reminder, don't be scammed. Um, no one has money to give you. It'll come directly from the uh, IRS and the Treasury. So don't, do not give out any personal information to anyone. Um, and if you want to check this website, uh, I would encourage you to do so for rumors. Uh, the payroll protection program, we've heard a lot about a lot of large companies, um, you know, taking a, a lot of money and now returning it. And so the United States SBA and Treasury recently updated some guidance on what it actually takes to make the loan certifications of good faith. And they have created an amnesty deadline by May the 7th. So if you took PPP money and you really don't need it, meaning you're a larger company and you have access to liquidity or access to capital, or you just have a lot of money in the bank, then um, you know, you need to return these monies, and if you do it by May the 7th, uh, it's no harm, no foul, it's an amnesty deadline. I know at $2 million and above, the uh, SBA will be doing an audit, uh, but if you want to learn more about the income qualifications and the new guidelines, I encourage you to go look at the FAQs. Pay attention to questions 37 and 31. Uh, they both sort of point to each other, but it does make it clear about the issues raised from the larger public companies. Um, and how they would also apply to private companies. You can go to home.treasury.gov and then the little search box, type PPP, and you can get to some of the new guidelines. So uh, for all of you that are using the PPP program, especially if you took a larger loan, this is a great place to go look at the new guidelines. Uh, we're still under a state of emergency here in North Carolina. Here's the 1-800 number if you need it. You can use 211 on your cell phones. Uh, the numbers as of today were 11,848 confirmed cases, 430 deaths. That's up from 399 deaths on Friday when we uh, had our last call. The number of hospitalizations has actually come down. It was 547 on Friday, and it's now at 498. 
Uh, that number has kind of seemed to be holding, going down, then a little bit up and going down. So it does seem like maybe we're at the top of that curve and starting to flatten, which is great. And then the number of counties, we are now at 99 counties. We're at 98, no surprise there. We have 100 counties and we are down the one county left that doesn't have a reported case yet, uh, but I'm, I expect that will change over time. So uh, 99 out of 100. Uh, on Saturday, the General Assembly passed a $1.57 billion uh, pandemic Response Act. Uh, it's a bill that was negotiated between the Senate and the House. It was based on some uh, money that was uh, received by North Carolina from the federal government uh, for this particular pandemic. And it includes millions of dollars in funding for education, health care, uh, small business loads, food bank, uh, coronavirus testing, uh, tracing, tracking, PPE, and more. Uh, the bill has been sent to the governor for ratification. And based on a little tweet that I saw from the governor, it looks as though he's supportive of it and uh, uh, and won't veto the bill. So it looks like he'll sign the bill. So we, sh we shall see, but that's what it looks like. Uh, we are uh, under a stay-at-home uh, orders until May the 8th. Uh, hopefully that won't get re-extended and we'll then move into phase one. Phase one is part of the three-phase approach. I'm not really sure the difference between phase one and where we are today. I've looked at the, the guidelines for phase one and it feels a lot like what we're doing today, but I guess we need to officially get this thing started in the phases. So hopefully, starting this Friday, we will officially be in phase one. And after phase one, they're saying it'll be about two to three weeks after phase one, we're going to phase two. Phase two is where I, I'm going to uh, predict that we're going to really start feeling some relief. In other words, the stay-at-home order will be lifted with strong encouragement for vulnerable people to stay home. There's going to be a limited number of restaurants, bars, and other businesses that can start to open as long as they follow strict safety protocols, which reduce capacities. Uh, you know, some in, allowed some gatherings at churches and entertainment venues that reduce capacities, uh, opening public playgrounds, et cetera. And after phase two, we'll go to phase three. And again, those restrictions will even be uh, lessened even more, reduced even more. So really, phase two is what uh, I'm hopeful we get to very quickly. But we got to hit through phase one to get to phase two. Uh, Mecklenburg County data, we're at 1,732 positive cases and 52 deaths. Uh, the county has fully transitioned to the state stay-at-home order, uh, and Mecklenburg County Parks and Boat Ramps are open, and so are the tennis courts. As long as you follow the USTA's rules and restrictions, and you can go to the USTA website and find those, as long as you follow their rules and restrictions, then tennis right now is the only sport, if you will, that is okay to play. They're, they're still not allowing basketball and baseball and other things, but tennis is fair game as long as you, as long as you follow these rules. So moving into hopefully some of our panelists here, um, Dr. Jack Faircloth is a medical doctor on the ground in Huntersville. Uh, I'm hopeful Dr. Jack is with us today. Dr. Jack, are you here today? Dr. Jack, are you on? Okay, he may not be on right now. So uh, let's see if uh, uh, Mecklenburg County Commission. Oh, Dr. Jack, is that you? Nope, guess not. Uh, Mecklenburg County Commissioner Pat Cotham, are you with us today? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, great. Uh, the microphone is yours, uh, Commissioner. Thanks for joining. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, happy Monday to everybody. Um, uh, one thing that I just want to mention, you, uh, you talked about uh, some stores requiring face masks for everyone, and I just want to bring up, I, I, have, I have been involved a lot with mental health, and uh, a lot of people who have anxiety really have a hard time it really cannot wear a face mask they they cannot it is it's too hard i have heard from uh, several people about that so i just uh, you know wanted to share that as you know being non-judgmental if we see people not wearing a mask it could be that that's part of it okay um the next thing i wanted to talk about is um more about the how much this is costing uh, us so far and in Mecklenburg County uh, so far as of April 30th um, we're tracking 11.8 million dollars directly related to the COVID response um, of that money um, 2.4 million is incurred expenses um, we spent 1.1 million just cash for different things um, also 1.5 million in COVID um, related salaries, um, and which includes a, a small amount for people who, uh, employees that like $54,000 that wanted to take family or medical leave, perhaps they had, you know, a loved one who had contracted the virus. 
Um, we've also contributed $5.5 million to the Carolina Small Business Development Fund. Um, this is the one that I struggled with because I didn't like it that there was a million dollar fee to um, give out this money. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we've also contributed $1.3 million to the United Way to support the COVID-19 response fund, uh, focusing on those in need, especially um, those, uh, our homeless neighbors, you know, that includes, you know, the, um, we've done a lot to house homeless people and, and do more things. So that's what that money uh, has gone to. Um, we still expect more costs to increase over time. Um, and in addition to these costs, the county finance will continue to monitor the overall impacts of the event on revenue and secondary losses that will se severely, you know, impact the county budget. Um, from a reimbursement perspective, Mecklenburg County is working closely with the North Carolina Emergency Management. Again, it is the uh, emergency management team here that's making the decisions. It hasn't been the county commissioners. Um, and um, we're also working closely, again, for reimbursement with the Department of Health and Human Services so we can uh, get all eligible dollars from state agencies and the federal government. Currently, we have received um, uh, 40, around $40 million from the federal government. And I think that was a little bit of a surprise. And I thought that sounded great. But then I heard that the city of Charlotte received $150 million. So I, I'm kind of wondering what, what's the difference. But, um, and also I heard, uh, and I heard this from, um, I, when I was on the call with uh, Ed Driggs, he has a Friday coffee and he said the airport received $130 million. So I, I guess we'll learn more about that. But anyway, I just want to tell you the county got 39 million, the city of Charlotte, 150 million and the airport 130 million um and um uh also uh, and it you know just in summary we will we don't think this is the end of it we think there will be more funds but that's what we have so far um so that's you know kind of a brief report from the county but um i'm sure i'll have more on wednesday but that concludes my report Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Kaufman. Appreciate you being a mainstay on our calls here. Uh, so now we're going to move to the town of Cornelius. Uh, we have the mayor, Woody Washam. Uh, Woody, are you with us today, sir? Yes, I am, John. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, hey Mayor. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, happy. Happy to be here. Uh, had a busy weekend on the lake uh, this past weekend. Uh, beautiful weather. Uh, brings out folks. Uh, I think we did have a couple uh, minor issues in and around our sandbar and, uh, and, and different other uh, different other areas where it's very typical for folks to gather. But uh, the chief reports that he was able to uh, educate a lot of folks uh, without any kind of citations or anything of that nature. Of course, he does have the authority to do that through the state order, but hopefully we won't have to get to that. So, uh, so that that was our our lake time this weekend. Uh, parks were busy, uh, reopened again. That solved some of our problems with parking and the things that we had uh, experienced since those parks, uh, particularly the county parks had been closed for parking. So, so anyway, uh, uh, that that covers us on the on the park side of, uh, of the issue. We're, uh, we had a amazing uh, uh, coffee chat this morning, a Connecting Cornelius coffee chat that we do once a month. Uh, it was multi-purpose this time, uh, primarily leaning toward updates with the uh, COVID-19 situation. Uh, we had on the line the uh, uh, county manager, the uh, uh, deputy chief Graham, uh, Gibby Harris, the health uh, uh, county me medical director, and a uh, lot of great input from our town manager, our Parks director and also our police chief and our fire chief. So, uh, a very very uh, information filled conversation that lasted about an hour. We had 120 folks that were interested enough in what was going on to tune into that call uh, by Zoom. 
a uh, pretty incredible number. Uh, I think that breaks all of our records on connecting Cornelius. So uh, it was a it was a, a big event. It should still be out there on on Facebook on the town's Facebook page if anybody's interested in in um, uh, tapping back into that. Uh, we have a meeting tonight at Town Hall. It begins at seven o'clock. Uh, we are going to be predominantly uh, talking about budget. Uh, you will hear from the manager's presentation about budget impact from COVID-19, which concerns me and I'm sure uh, the other mayors and boards in our state quite, uh, quite heavily. There is some major impact going on as it relates to our reduced revenue and in some cases increased expenses. So that's not a good scenario. Uh, we're all committed to uh, not travel down the road of a tax increase right now. So we got to make it work. So we've got to look hard at many, many of our programs and hopefully we can get that, get that resolved. We're also lobbying our legislators very heavily to get some help from the state for our municipalities. The uh, uh, Metro Mayors Association and North Carolina League is working hard on that. Uh, there is a bill being signed by the governor I'm not sure that has any assistance for the municipalities uh, and or the counties in that particular one. It could, but uh, we're not seeing any for the, for the municipalities and we need it as well. I know the counties need it, but so do our towns and cities throughout the state. So uh, we need some help in lobbying to get that done. If anybody has any really good contacts uh, like Mr. Bradford and others, we do need to need a little assistance there. We talked to our current representatives and uh, they're trying to do what they can. And uh, I think we're making some progress. So we'll see what comes down with that. So stand by, more to come. Uh, budgets are pretty close to the top of our list. We're very concerned about that, but I'm sure every uh, political uh, body, elected body in, in our uh, country is probably in the same boat. And that's all I have, thank you. Okay, Cornelius, uh, Mayor Woody Washington, thank you. Uh, moving to the town of Huntersville, Mayor uh, John Anarella, the microphone's yours, Mayor. Oh, hey, John, uh, thanks, and thanks for having me. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, to answer uh, Commissioner Cotham's question about Charlotte receiving some substantial funds, my understanding is in the first uh, relief bill, uh, cities received a certain amount of money and they had to be over 500,000 in population. So there are really only two in uh, North Carolina and then uh, some counties got some money as well. So I think that might be the uh, discrepancy there. Uh, and as uh, Mayor Washam said, uh, municipalities are the low man on the totem pole. And uh, my understanding is in today's uh, signing of the legislation that the governor will sign, there are some funds in there for counties but not necessarily for the municipalities unless there might be a tweak here and there uh, to have some kind of discretion for the counties to give the municipalities but we know how that's always worked in the past uh, so getting back to what's what's going on in huntersville pretty similar to uh, mayor washam uh, I think the good news is, uh, you know, we're still having you know, pretty good numbers relative to the rest of the country. Uh, we're slowly opening up. Hopefully on the 9th, we'll uh, be up and running. I think, John, the difference will be retailers will be able to be open to in the ones that are non-essential to in-store service, as long as you adhere to the guidelines that were set out, oh, I guess, over a month ago. Uh, so that might be the big difference there, uh, those non-essential. I always think it's funny that uh, you can go to a dog groomer now, but you can't go and get your hair cut uh, at the barbershop. So maybe the dog groomers will let you cut your hair there too. But um, <laughs> tell, tell us how we're one, done, <laughs> one, one big uh, issue right now, we've, we've done a great job of supporting our nonprofits that provide uh, food. Um, however, it, it's starting to wane a little bit. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have been laid off and they're concerned about their jobs, but hopefully things are going to start coming back here pretty soon. And, and pre please uh, consider 
uh, you know, all the different charities that provide food. Uh, you can go to charmecresponds.org, uh, has a number of uh, different charities that you can contact. And then uh, we have a meeting tonight as well, six o'clock, mostly on the budget. Uh, fortunately, municipalities, only about 10, 12% of their budget is really def discretionary, so to speak, uh, in terms of their revenues. Those come from sales tax or tourism taxes. Uh, obviously, we have pretty stable uh, income or revenue coming from property taxes and some other areas. Uh, however, there will be some tweaks that will be need to make, and um, you know, we'll look forward to getting the manager's uh, recommended budget tonight. And then finally, one of the things that the state is really looking at in terms of you know how we open up and how quickly we open up is the percentage of positive tests as a total of all tests. And that number is decreasing. So in Mecklenburg County, we're testing a lot more. Throughout the state, we're testing a lot more. And fortunately, the percentage hasn't really gone up. It's usually like 9% or so. Um, and then hospitals are um, leveling off to declining. So I think you have probably 70 to 80 people that are in Mecklenburg County hospitals with the COVID right now. And the highest it's been is about 100. So keep doing what you're doing, uh, shop locally, and uh, hopefully uh, May 9th, we'll have a little more uh, normalcy back in, in our communities. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. And if you uh, find a dog rib that cuts your hair, let us know how that works out, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to uh, the town of Davidson. I don't know if we have Commissioner Matthew Fort with us today. Uh, Commissioner, are you with us by chance? Okay, I didn't hear a confirmation from him, so uh, he may have been tied up in another meeting. So moving to uh, our Chief Executive Officer of Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce. I know Bill's there. He's usually the first one to dial in. Uh, Mr. Russell, the microphone's yours, yours my friend. Well, in, in, in response to Mayor Anarella as a dog owner, I will tell you that dog grooming is absolutely essential. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm really I'm really happy that the dog groomers are back in business and uh, like John, I do need a haircut. <laughs> I hope we can take care of that very soon too. Um, John, you may be aware that each year the United States Small Business Administration designates a week of the year to celebrate Small Business Week. That was intended originally for May 4th through the 11th, but because of the COVID-19, officially the SBA has kicked that designation down the road a piece. We don't know when they're going to, to recognize small business, but I've always long thought, and a lot of our board members have long thought, that small business should be celebrated each week, each and every day. So that being the case, we're stick, sticking to our guns, and starting today, we are having programs uh, that is specifically designed to assist small business and retailers. And it, it is two weeks jam-packed full of events, um, all of them virtual oriented. Uh, we began today with uh, Mayor Washam's Cornelius Coffee Chat that he just talked about. But tomorrow, we have a special business work that we have Charles Knox that's going to be speaking about landlord and tenant relationships and best, best practices due to COVID-19 um, related issues. And we have a small business workshop on Wednesday, leading and managing through the crisis with Karen Bentley, which is going to be fantastic. Thursday, a business mixer that we're going to have virtually. And then Friday, for those people who have participated in Zoom seminars like this one and others, but haven't yet driven Zoom, this is a chance to find out how to operate Zoom uh, for your own particular business or your own particular use. I'm really excited about next week as well because we have for seven years put on a small business event of the year and we couldn't have it this year with people being present but we put together a program that's going to be entitled a little inspiration a touch of motivation and lots of laughs and we're bringing back last year our keynote with steve gilliland and steve is coming back he is going to be a keynote speaker on wednesday the 11th of uh, 13th but on the 11th, we have Chuck Gallagher, who was our keynote two years ago. And then on Tuesday, May the 12th, Kathy McAfee, who I understand is, is probably just as good or maybe better than Steve or Chuck. So again, three nights filled with motivational speakers, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. This is being co-promoted by WSIC. And Senator Tom Tillis will also have a message uh, uh, before each program. So at 7 
nine uh, next week, the 11th through the 13th. That's going to be recorded, so if you can't catch us in the evening, you'll see that continue to appear. Um, then on the 14th, we're going to have a business works called Selling in the New Norm. How does that look like? How, how do you sell during this pandemic and after the uh, pandemic? And then Friday the 15th, our last day, where we're officially honoring our small businesses, we're going to have a session that we're putting together on the stress that that people, business owners, managers, employees, and families have really incurred during this pandemic and, and how to handle that stress, which is likely to, to continue with us for some time. Um, we have created two great resources on the internet. I've talked about them before. Uh, one of them put together by two national retail associations uh, about uh, getting ready to sell and prepare your business for selling and uh, re-engaging um, with, with our businesses again. We're looking forward to that day. Uh, as uh, John and Woody just talked about, the, the fact is, is is that some of the businesses have, have remained open as essential businesses. More were added last week, and then in a couple of weeks, uh, well, later on th this week, we might have even more join. Uh, to, when we go into phase one and then in a couple of weeks, even more retailers open for business. So we're easing back into business at the lake. We're excited about that. I've talked to businesses who can't wait to get back. They're looking forward to that. We can't wait in, until we have uh, consumers, people who are back in the restaurants and back in the shops and getting businesses to thrive. I was telling on Mayor uh, Washam's Coffee Chat this morning uh, in February when we talked about me actually being on his show, we had the lowest unemployment in the history of the country. We had a stock market that was, was setting records. We had an economy that was humming. And here in Lake Norman, it was indicative of that. We had a very, very strong economy. Uh, we're going to get back to that. Uh, we're going to see those kind of numbers again. It's going to take us a little while, but we'll get back there. And in the meantime, we thank uh, everybody for continuing to, to support our area restaurateurs, uh, our retail businesses, Thank you for the support of our small business community. And I hope people will be able to join us online for many of those events I just talked about. You can go to lakenormanchamber.org. That's lakenormanchamber.org for a list of all of the activities. Our Chamber of Commerce, we have right at 850 members serving Huntersville, Davidson, Cornelius, and the greater Lake Norman region. But whether you're members of our chamber or not, I encourage you to, to look at some of these events, uh, attend them virtually, uh, participate in the seminars. This is a way we're going to, once again, re-engage our business community and get things humming again for Lake. So again, John, thank you for everything you're doing on your end, and I appreciate you putting this, this call together. Are you bet, and thank you for just the Chamber's leadership. I mean, I'm, I've been a long-standing member of your Chamber, and, uh, and the, amount, the amount of work you guys are doing in this uh, uh, unique environment is amazing. So congratulations thank to you. you and your board and all, and all your members, of course. Uh, so uh, moving on, uh, the Huntersville Regional Chamber, I, I, um, you know, we've always had an open invite to them, but I know this weekend, uh, I think they had a parade going through Burkdale, and I saw something on Facebook, it looks like some of their members were having fun, they were throwing rolls of toilet paper out instead of candy, so uh, good for them, you know, just uh, breaking up monotony, getting out there. Um, and then uh, visit Lake Norman, I just want to talk about our friends there, they have a virtual tip jar, they also have all the lakeside, curbside listings for restaurants, so you can check it out. Uh, right here at visitlakenorman.org slash restaurants. And then also uh, they have coloring pages. They've taken some of the photos of Lake Norman, turned them into black and white. Um, and you can also take uh, virtual tours of the area. And for uh, all of those folks, which are a lot of you who are doing Zoom, they have some uh, neat Zoom backgrounds. And I've updated some of them. Here's a beautiful shot of uh, the pier. I think this is uh, the pier at, uh, I think that's Ramsey Creek. I believe it is, not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like. Um, here's the beach at Ramsey Creek. Uh, here's a, one of our uh, green ways uh, through the woods, uh, and there's a gorgeous sunset right here. Uh, well, either sunset or sunrise uh, here on Lake Norman. Uh, you can download all those and use those as Zoom. Uh, just want to thank our panelists, uh, Congressman Greg Murphy couldn't join today. Dr. J Jack, uh, excuse me, Dr. Jack Faircloth actually uh, is now with Atrium. Uh, I believe, and today was uh, his first day at Atrium, so he was unable to be on our call today. On Wednesday, we'll have the, the United States Small Business Administration Director of North Carolina, Thomas Fifth. He joins every Wednesday. And then our normal lineup of Commissioner Pat, uh, County Commissioner Pat Cawthon, uh, Cornelius Mayor Woody Washington, Harnsville Mayor John Anarella. Hopefully, we'll hear back from Commissioner Matthew Ford again from Davidson. 
Uh, Rhonda Lemon, obviously school's winding down to a close. She'll update us on graduation, so we probably won't hear from her until graduation happens, so we'll know more about that. And then, of course, you just heard from Bill Russell, and I'm John Bradford, former North Carolina House Representative. If you want to get these calls, go to Elect Bradford uh, on Facebook, and I post them there. Our next briefing will be Wednesday, May the 6th, LKN together at gmail.com. Keep your questions coming, LKN together at gmail.com. We are stronger together. Uh, I hope you'll take care of yourself, take care of each other, and this does include today's briefing call. Thank you so much for listening.